South Florida. And on behalf of the PPE Committee for 2015, thank you for being here. It is a cold day in Florida, but the sun is still shining, so we're excited about that, <laughs> sending some sunshine to those who don't have any today. Um, I am happy to be here again moderating our TPE Roundtable series, this time about navigating TPE as an introvert. And since I know very little about that, I have employed the help of some of our field's finest introverts. But before we have our panelists introduce themselves, um, I'll just get started with a few um, announcements. So first is that today, uh, you can use the hashtag TPE2015, and if you would like to follow us on Twitter, you can, and we're at TPE2015. Okay, please share all of the, the nuggets that our panelists will share with you today and share them widely. Um, also, Friday is the last day for early bird registration at TPE, so we hope you will take advantage of that opportunity and join us in New Orleans. Finally, March 6th is the last day for um, the TPE committee to help you with resume reviews, so please visit our website, www.theplacementexchange.org, and let us know how we can help you. Okay, so today's roundtable will operate a little bit more like a webinar since our panelists have discussed a few talking points that they want to make sure that they share with you. Um, and throughout the presentation, please feel free to send questions, and at the end, the panelists will leave some time to you know, so they can answer those questions for you, and I'll go through them and, and ask those questions aloud. And so without further ado, I'm going to have the panelists introduce themselves, and we will get started. So we'll start with you, Nick. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Sweeten, and I'm the Director of Residential Education at the University of Arizona, and I strongly identify as an introvert. Um, and I, I went through um, TPE before it was TPE, way back in 2001. Um, at ACPA in Boston, so I've been on the candidate side of the table once, and I've been on the employer side of the table many times. So I'm happy to share my insights as an introvert and also um, from when I was a candidate and now as an employer. Hello, everybody. My name is Melanie Cruz, and I'm the Assistant Director of Student Activities Center and Leadership Development Programs at the University of Pacific in Northern California. Um, I'm here because uh, I also somewhat identify as an introvert, and so I guess for me, um, today TV offers a lot more resources than um, were offered when I was searching as a grad, and so I, something that's really important to me is just helping um, graduate students and new professionals find a job and navigate that search, um, just because when I was in school, I, I feel like I navigated TV um, more blindly, and so I want to help others and make sure that they don't have to do the same. Hey everybody, this is Jeremy Davis. I'm the Associate Director of Student Activities at the University of Northern Colorado. As you can probably tell by my picture, I identify as both an introvert and an extrovert, but I identify as an introvert as how I get my energy, so how I recharge. Um, I've been involved with TPE for about six years on the employer side of the table, and I'm really excited to share some of my insight to assist candidates to be successful in their search. So the first bit of um, perspective and information that we're going to share with everyone um, is kind of focusing on the disadvantages of being an introvert in uh, the TPE setting. And I thought the best way to explore this um, would be to interview um, or to interview several self-identified introverts who participated in TPE within the last five years. And so I collected their comments and was able to form three prominent themes. The first one is the job search paradigm and um, there's really this assumption that there's an outward focus as a preferred style in society and what employees are seeking. So for example, um, reflecting back on their experience, one colleague shared with me that they felt pressured to make small talk with other candidates when they were in the, the large waiting areas. They thought that employers would be forming opinions about their candidacy and when um, they are picked up would place a stronger value on someone who is connecting with others rather than collecting their thoughts. Also, traditional interview prep lies um, with an extroverted uh, paradigm of selling yourself, which is much more of an extrovert skill. <clears throat> and then um, also skills needed to be successful in the search are not always the same as what is needed to be successful in the job, so it's, it's uh, quite a challenge. Another challenge is the physical and social um, environment. It is so taxing. Um, for both employers and for candidates. It's a large open conference center, there's fluorescent lights, a constant hum of talking, and it can be super overwhelming with so many people present. 
Another introverted colleague told me about their experience at TPE, and they found it to be like very overwhelming coming from a small school. Um, there were likely more candidates present than students at their institution. And another uh, respondent told me that they're really uncomfortable with the unstructured group settings. In particular, they're annoyed with the icebreakers um, that they had to do with strangers and waiting areas. And they felt like it had the opposite effect of the intention of reducing some of the, that anxiety. And then also, um, one last thing that uh, kind of came through in the comments was there's this internalization of um, their actions and everything that happens in this interview environment. So for example, one colleague told me that as an introvert, they are very conscious or unsure of how they present in an interview. And while anyone can be self-conscious, they, they ask themselves questions that perhaps a, an extrovert would not. So the next slide is going to talk about the advantages. So hi, this is uh, Nick Sweeten again. So uh, how I tackled my part of this um, webinar was actually did a little bit of research. And there's actually been a lot of research lately on uh, introverts in the workplace. Um, and, and so I wanted to kind of talk about, as introverts, what, are, what um, sort of commonalities do we typically have um, amongst each other? And then how do we leverage those in a TPE setting? And one of, one of the um, strengths of most introverts is that we are generally better at one-on-one -on -one relationships um, than extroverts in general, but also better at one-on-one -on -one relationships than we are at group relationships. And I definitely see this in myself. Like my own experience in, when I was a candidate at TPE, as Jeremy alluded to, was the parts where I was like in the waiting area with like you know, dozens of other candidates were way more taxing on me than, than when I was actually seated at a table and speaking with the person interviewing me. Um, and so, um, but, but I felt like my skill at doing the one-on-one -on -one thing um, really shined during my interview, because most of the interviews at TPE will be you with one and maybe two other people on the other side of the table. So you definitely want to um, use and leverage that skill during the interview itself. Um, also, uh, introverts tend to thrive when they are prepared and have time to plan. And I think the fact that you know in January, two and a half months before you're even at TPE, you're doing this webinar, um, is a good sign that you are preparing and that you're planning for what TPE would, um, will be like. So study up. So um, uh, know what it will be like. Um, there will be a TPE orientation on site. Go to the orientation. Check out the, the space. Like figure out where the waiting areas are. Um, un and understand things like, um, uh, you know, like if, if you know where your interviewer tables are ahead of time, like maybe figure out where those are, um, how long you might need to get from the um, uh, to get to the waiting area to be there in time for to get picked up to go to the table, things like that. So really understand um, the environment, but not just that, understand the institutions you're applying for. Make sure you know things like the mission statement. Um, even do things like um, uh, look at the, the school paper, you know, the, the most recent school paper the day before you interview, and know what's going on at those schools. Um, and, and, um, uh, and of course, come across as prepared and, and, uh, and ready to go, and you will probably do really well. I also, um, the research also says that introverts are generally better at concentrating. And um, I think that's really helpful in the TVE environment because there's a lot going on around you. And people who are not good at concentrating have a more difficult time when they're actually in the interview. You can see other tables around you. You can see other people getting up and moving around. You might have some friends interviewing at schools um, at tables kind of near you. And as introverts, we are generally better at, at honing only on the task at hand, which is interviewing, and sort of blocking out all of the other distractions around us, which some extroverts have more difficulty doing. Um, also, introverts are better at answering questions concisely. Um, and uh, I can tell you that as, a, as an employer, and having seated at the employer side of the table many times, um, those days get really taxing. We're generally interviewing dozens of candidates a day. We hear many of the same answers over and over. And by the end of the day, when you get those candidates that just take forever to answer a question, you know, they, they take 10 minutes to answer a two-minute question, um, uh, it, it, um, it doesn't necessarily detract from their candidacy, but it, it generally also, um, you know, it might leave a little bit of a negative mark on that person. Versus introverts who are generally better able at getting to the heart of the question and answering things concisely. And trust me when I say employers appreciate that. They appreciate when you get to the heart of the question, you don't beat around the bush, um, and, and, um, and you don't sort of get lost in your answer. And I think that goes hand in hand with, with, the, with the next piece, which is that introverts in general are more creative and imaginative. Many of you probably have seen the statistics about how introverts are disproportionately 
um, you know, artists and um, actors and entertainers and CEOs and presidents. And I think that goes back to our ability to be creative and imaginative is, is probably more ingrained in introverts than it is in extroverts. And um, so I would say it's okay to take, take some risks with your answers. Um, employers know when, when you're giving like sort of standard out-of-the-box answers. They're interviewing dozens of people. Like I said, they're hearing the same answers over and over again. And if you can use your, your, the, the period in which you're answering questions to illustrate your imaginative, your, how imaginative you are, how creative you are, um, it will definitely make you stand out as a candidate. So definitely leverage that strength as, as an introvert. And the last strength I wanted to talk about is that introverts are generally good listeners. Um, and meaning like we are, we are typically pretty good at listening to the question that's being asked, taking a second to understand what's being asked at us, and then answering in a concise way that hits at the heart of the question. Um, uh, again, as an employer on the employer side of the table, um, we will see dozens of candidates who are ready, clearly like ready. Their body language indicates that they're ready to jump on an answer, and some candidates even interrupt the, the, um, the employer when they're asking a question because they're ready to go with their answer. Maybe they're so excited to answer or they already know what they want to say. And that gets distracting and annoying to an employer. So if you can leverage that strength of like sitting and listening and, and letting your body language indicate that you're listening and paying attention to what the employer is saying, that will definitely work in your favor. So Great. I will hand it, I'll hand it over to Melody to talk about what to prepare for. Awesome. So we've come up with some ways um, to prepare for TPE. And the first thing is environment. Know where you're going literally. It's really important that you understand the interview environment. A day or two before the interviews, determine exactly where the interview site is, how you'll get there, and with plenty of time to spare. Walk around the convention center, know your surroundings, and where the candidate waiting areas are. Those are most important. Uh, by doing this, you'll gain a peace of mind and conserve valuable energy. The second tip is plan your interview schedule wisely. Um, evaluate how many interviews you should take on. This is something that is going to be unique to each person, and so it's different from you to me. Uh, so make sure you find a good balance. Don't get caught up in the contest of how many interviews you have compared to someone else. Try to avoid back-to-back -back interviews. As an introvert, you will want to recharge time. If you're going back to back, you won't have the time you need to get your mindset in the right place. Another thing to keep in mind is to um, seek out introverts. Um, they can help you introduce you to others. So creating a buddy system. If you know someone who is attending that is an extrovert, try to work in pairs. They will be the ones that will help you start a conversation with someone you don't know. Standing beside a friend while they introduce you to someone um, new is much easier than you having to do it. The best connections are often made through colleagues and mutual acquaintances. Um, so some institutions have socials uh, for their applicants, and so these are typically in the evening hours, and they can be very overwhelming and intimidating for introverts. And I know for myself it was extremely um, intimidating. Um, so here is where is, it's a good time to use the buddy system or a support network. Um, if you have a friend or, or a buddy system, it can feel less daunting. Not going is an option, but really, is it the best option? I would advise you to attend them, but make sure you have questions ready. Have a wing person if possible. Don't feel like you have to be there the whole time. Um, as long as you go, those who interviewed you will see you. Everyone else who is interviewed will be there as well, so it could feel like a giant competition. The main goal of the social is to be seen and find a way to connect with someone from the institution outside of the formal interview setting. Uh, with interviews all day and socials at night, it's important to also um, schedule recharge time. Extro extroverts typically draw energy from others, while introverts need to typically recharge their own mental and emotional batteries. Um, so schedule some downtime for your day to help you recharge. Remember, if you have back-to-back -back interviews, this will be really difficult. Um, plan to take a quiet walk or a retreat to your room for 30 minutes. Read materials that help you prepare for a later interview, or just write a thank you note. The convention center will most likely feel very overwhelming um, due to the large space, uh, but there's ample places there that you can go to find a quiet space for five to ten minute breather sessions. Um, scope those out during that orientation or the day before. Whatever you do, uh, just find a way that works for you to disconnect from other humans and let yourself recharge. That way you stay fresh. Um, so though you need time uh, to yourself, you also have to be ready for the encounters with others. Um, others. That's why it's important to prepare for small talk. 
on small talk. Most introverts will admit they don't like small talk or chit chat, um, but all, as we all know, during the interview period um, at the beginning, there's that time where you have to talk about getting to know you and all of that. A good way to diminish, diminish the dread of talking to people is to have conversation points prepared before you even go into the interview. Um, one of the easiest ways to navigate small talk is to ask people questions. By their nature, humans love to talk about themselves, and so um, if, if you are challenged, it's always important just to ask them questions, and it will take the pressure off of you um, and give you some time you know, to, to just sit there. Um, if you're not comfortable with coming up questions on the fly, write them down in a notepad. Uh, take it with, with you um, throughout the time that you're there, so that way you're always prepared. Um, so it's important, again, to bring notes, as um, Nick has said. Um, you will want to have your questions for your interview sessions readily available just on a notepad. If you have them um, there, you can have them in front of you. Having questions ready before takes pressure off you during the actual interview so you can focus on what they're asking you. This will keep you um, focused and not wasting um, your energy uh, worrying about what questions they're going to ask or what questions you're going to ask, I'm sorry. Um, also, most introverts need some time, sorry, one second, need some time to process. Um, so it's good if you do write some stuff down so that way um, it will give you some time to think about it and not have to respond so quickly. Um, so make sure that you have good notes about the job that you're applying for and what, would, um, what you're going to be getting into. Once again, you probably need time to process your answers. Having good notes about what you're getting into will give you a peace of mind knowing that you have the answers you're looking for um, spur the moment of the interview. Now that I've taken some time to share tips with you, we have thought of the best, um, what it would be best for us to share. Uh, we've come up with some strategies for you. Um, so let's start with Nick. So uh, we wanted to share like how we did it as introverts, like how we got, like all three of us successfully navigated TPE and successfully got jobs that we all liked um, for, our, for our entry level positions. And so, um, how I did it, I, when I wanted to compare myself with, with one of my best friends from my grad program um, who was, is a major extrovert, and we, we went through TPE entirely different ways. So um, my friend Sarah, who is now at a school in California, um, she, she um, was, had like 30-some interviews pre-scheduled, and she basically, anyone that reached out to her and said, hey, we're interested in you, she scheduled an interview with them. And she did back to back to back the first two days of TPEs uh, when, when first interviews traditionally are, are taking place. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for me as an introvert, that would have completely exhausted me. So I think she had somewhere around 36 interviews pre-scheduled. I had nine. And, um, and so beforehand, going back to that preparing and, um, and doing your homework, like I had selected nine schools that were in geographical locations I was interested in, whose mission statements I was drawn to. Um, and, and I even paid attention to things like when I reached out to an employer to ask for an interview, how did they respond? Like, how did I feel about the response? You know, did they seem genuinely interested in me and things like that? And I only pre-scheduled nine interviews. During TPE, I did get, um, you know, cards in my mailbox saying, hey, check us out. And, um, and I wasn't afraid to say no. I mean, if, if a school was in a place I knew I didn't want to go or, you know, it was maybe like a religiously affiliated school that for me was not the right fit, um, I was not afraid to say no, um, but if I did get invited to an interview, I did my homework in the research room at TPE. So I, I, I went online, I checked out the school's um, website, their mission, et cetera. And so when I went to TPE for my nine interviews, they were nine schools that I was sure I was interested in, um, in continuing to pursue at, at TPE, or at least pursuing, pursuing a, a first interview. And I knew those schools inside and out. Um, and uh, um, the other thing I did was, after I had my first interviews of my nine, I ranked them, and I only accepted second interviews from my top six, um, figuring that, you know, I did the math in my head, and I'm like, you know, if I get, if I do six second interviews, I'll probably get at least three on-campus interviews, and by the time you're a finalist, you know, you're usually one of two or three or four finalists, so the odds of getting a job are pretty good, and I didn't just want to take anything. And so I didn't accept all the second interviews I've been offered if they didn't make the, if they didn't make my top six cut. So I did uh, six second interviews, and before I did the second interview, um, in the research room, I went back and like reread everything about the school, went back to their website for their housing program, um, 
and uh, and I even went back and read as you know a couple weeks back in like the student newspaper or the institutional newsletters they have online, so that I understood what types of things the institution was dealing with, and I could ask questions about it because that is impressive to employers, and that also shows that you're committed. So an example I'll give now. This was 15 years ago, but at the time. Um, one of the second interviews I accepted was at University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And so after I got the second interview request from them, um, I, I had one, it was actually in the Chronicle at the time, and then also in their student newspaper. They were dealing with, with some kind of issue with student gambling. And being in Las Vegas, of course, that makes sense. Um, and so I learned the details of what they were dealing with. Um, I learned like what they were struggling to deal with, um, some of the strategies they had put in place that were reported in the Chronicle and, and in the school paper. Um, and I asked questions about them during the second interview. And at the time, they gave me feedback, like, that's really impressive that you knew that, that you took the time to, to know that. And so I was hyper-prepared. So I had um, fewer, and in some cases, far fewer interviews than some of my peers did. But I would say that I was significantly more prepared, or at least had significantly more detail memorized about each school, because I was dealing with fewer schools. And then when it came time for on-campus interviews, um, I got four on-campus interview offers. I accepted three of them. And of course, I, I did end up at one of my, my top three schools. Um, so, so I want to just highlight again what, what Melanie said about don't compare yourself to others. If you have classmates that have like 74,000 interviews, don't feel like you're a failure if you don't have that many interviews. Um, there's nothing wrong with honing in on what you really want. There's nothing wrong with saying no to an interview request. Um, so um, so uh, you definitely, you definitely want to do that. And now Jeremy is going to share some of his strategies. Jeremy, are you there? Muted. All right, I was muted. Sorry about that. Um, so similar to Nick, I had prepared and had a, a laser focus when considering how many schools I wanted to interview with. And an important factor for me in this specific search was processing with my partner prior to applying or interviewing. And so what we did was we sat down and we created a spreadsheet with all the things that we would need to consider when re relocating to a new area or starting a new job. And I think this is especially important at uh, TPE because as Nick mentioned, um, employers and candidates are still reviewing resumes and job opportunities and may um, extend an invite during the conference. So having that, being armed with that information to be able to make decisions that are um, uh, reflective of both your needs and your partner's needs is really helpful. Also, I would say the preferences sometimes for the geographical areas can be somewhat broad, like um, focusing on the West Coast. For example, my partner may have been okay with living in Alaska, but not Washington. So this, this process thing is really good to do in advance. I'm going to turn it over to Melanie. Awesome. Um, so I guess for me, as, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't have the, the resources when I prepared for the TP experience. Nor did I have um, mentors that could help me navigate the experience. So um, I will be the first to admit that I struggled during the initial portions of TPE. It took me a while to realize what I was getting into. Um, one thing that really helped me was attending the orientation. Um, though I wasn't quite ready for the social dynamic of TPE, at least I knew where everything was located. Um, it allowed me to create some game plans you know, for my success. I guess um, one pitfall that I had was I fell into the trap of feeling like I needed to compare myself, stuff that we've kind of talked to. And, and it really it becomes super easy to play that game, how many second round interviews you know, have you received? And so um, I think it's really important you just don't go there, just, just don't do it. Just do, do yourself. Um, know that every institution runs their TP process differently, and so some might have um, second rounds there, and, and some may not. And so um, you, know, it's, you just need to do you and, and focus on yourself. Um, I knew, I guess, how many interviews I wanted to do, and so I needed to just stick with that and, and try to ignore those little doubts that were creeping in my head. Um, I think also I made a lot sure to get a lot of downtime. Um, what I needed most was time after interviewing to be either by myself or around close friends. Um, and I was also searching with my partner, and so having that, that downtime to, to talk about things um, was really good for me. It was nice to have a few people there. Um, that I could get away with um, and, and talk to them. So with that, I, I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Nick and Jeremy. I really appreciate um, everything that you've shared with us today. 
There don't seem to be any questions on here, but what I really appreciated about what you all are saying um, is kind of taking what typically some folks may have thought to be negative things about being introverts and using them to your advantage. So, for instance, what Nick was saying about how to, you know, if introverts are really great with one-on-one -on -one relationships. Well, that's the core of, you know, of the TPE process, like how you can how you can really sell yourself right in front of another person or maybe two other people. And so that, that, that rapport that you build with, you know, with the employer is really important. And if that's um, something that comes more naturally to you, being able to focus on what those strengths are is really important. Um, so I, I guess I have a quick question. So many people, sometimes graduate students, will go to TPE and they will, um, I guess for cost reasons, you know, have plenty of a lot of people in the room in a hotel room perhaps what other ways um, of recharging and getting your energy back could you offer to our listeners today it's funny you should say that uh, this is Nick so um, it's funny you should say that because when I did TPE so we kind of lied to the Marriott and said that there were two people in the room but there were really eight of us sharing a room oh. um, and there were so many of us in the room that um, uh, we were in an old Marriott in Boston and the for some reason, uh, well, the room was like an odd shape, and it had this closet that was um, that you could that was big enough to sleep in. And I literally slept in the closet uh, because it was my space; like nobody else would, would come in there while, while I was sleeping. But um, but what I would do, and, and what I have done in, in uh, conferences since when I've shared a room with somebody is, um, I mean, I kind of have my zen when I'm like out blasting music in my headphones and go out on a walk and. I would make sure that I had time to do that every day, particularly if I'm in a city that I'm not familiar with. It would give me an opportunity to kind of go check out a park or something like that. But I would literally schedule that in my time. And you know, So I would say like from 11 to 1.30, I'm not going to schedule interviews. I'm going to grab a bite to eat, and I'm going to go sit in a park or you know, go sit and watch boats come down the river or whatever it is. Um, but, but that's how I did it. I just made sure that I, that I literally scheduled space for myself. I had another thought too, as as um, Melanie was talking, and just about the the part about not comparing yourself to others. And um, so let's say that like you and one of your friends in your grad program are both interviewing at a, at a, at a school, and your friend gets a second interview request and you don't. That's not necessarily bad. There's a lot of reasons why you may not have gotten a second interview request. One potential reason is that some employers do two days of first interviews. And they do. They give the second round interviews to um, to the people that went through the first day first, and then they run out of spots. So maybe they don't have enough spots at the conference to do a second interview. Some employers aren't doing second interviews at the conference. Some employers do some of the seconds at the conference. Do some of them by phone when they get back to campus. So um, it's just it's really important not to judge your own performance necessarily on how others around you are doing because you never really know what an employer is thinking. Absolutely, that's a really great point. I've had some questions come up, and they're not necessarily on the topic of introversion, but I think that you, um, between the four of us, I think we'll be able to handle it. You ready? Go sure. for it. Okay, so um, one question that I have here is, should we be connecting with employers prior to TPE so they are aware we want an interview, and should we apply for their jobs beforehand? Yes. So this is so, Jeremy. I would, um, I'd highly recommend that. Uh, as uh, there's a lot of um, interviews that occur on the employer side, it's nice to kind of distinguish yourself in some ways. And there are some processes that um, actually require candidates to apply prior. And I, for many years, I worked at a school as an employer, and it'd be frustrating as I would meet candidates at the conference who were amazing candidates, but they had missed our um, priority deadline for application. And so it was harder to consider them in our pool. So I would highly, highly recommend reaching out in advance if there's an institution that aligns with your values. Yeah, to piggyback on, on that a little bit, um, different institutions have different rules depending on either what state they're in or what university system they're in or if they're public or private about do you have to apply first or do you not? So you, um, it's important you pay attention to the like the, the job postings because some will tell you in order to even get an interview, you, you have to apply. In terms of reaching out to employers, um, I think there's nothing wrong with that, but don't be annoying about it. So what I mean by what I mean by that is like if you email them, don't email them again like two days later or three days later. Or if they don't reply, don't don't interpret that as a bad sign. Um, because I know myself as a director, and um, when we have big search years, you know, sometimes I'll get 
couple dozen emails from candidates who, you know, I'm really interested in your school, or I'm really interested in your mission and vision. And I actually do pay attention to that, and I remember who emailed me, because typically I come in for the last interview day now and interview the, the, the finalists. And, um, but I'm not, I don't always have time to answer each individual email. So I would say it's okay to like throw your hat in and then email like a director level person or something, but, but just do it once. And don't, and don't interpret it badly if, if, uh, if they don't reply back. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think that's excellent advice. And yes, you should be contacting them now um, to set up your interviews. Um, I have a question here. So what is your stance about outing yourself as an LGBT member, specifically with wanting to know how the area is for LGBT members? So uh, this is Nick again, and, and I identify as a LGBT. And um, it, it was an, it was uh, important to me in later job searches after my entry level job search. But um, I would wait until my strategy at the time was, and I think things have actually changed a lot since then, particularly in the last couple years. But um, I would wait, at, depending on how comfortable I was, until I had a one on one interview with the person that would be my supervisor. Um, or again, depending on how comfortable I was in the school, like the second interview at the conference. Um, uh, but but that is something you want to know, and and um, particularly if you're going to a region of the country where you perceive may or may not be um, uh, open to that, um, or may or may not be friendly. Like I feel like that is a, one. It's a very appropriate and very important question, and, and if it's make or break for you, you need to ask it. So. Um, so I, I think it's okay, and it's hard to say exactly when to do it because it's probably going to vary based on the school and the people you meet. Um, but but if it's important to you, ask it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so let's see here. What do we have? Um, this question. So did any did any one of you or someone you know um, have to deal with having just only very like a very restricted small region of, of an area where you could job search. Um, this person says that their fiance is having and and her trying to figure it out because he will be going to divinity school. So it's they're trying to figure out how to job search within a certain area and wondering if there's any advice on that. So uh, this is Nick again. Uh, sorry Melanie and Jared, feel free to jump in. I don't want to. No, you're doing great. All the answers. Um, <laughs> So um, I guess first I, I will be honest and say that um, restrictive job searches can be a lot more difficult, um, and, but it's definitely possible. I think it's, it's even more difficult at the entry level because when you're at the entry level, it's not typical for an institution to help you um, find your partner a job as well. It's not, it's not unheard of, but it's not typical. Um, but uh, I think when you're doing a restrictive job search like that, um, it does require you to be willing to go outside of your most desired parameters. So what I mean by that is I, I had a colleague once that was doing a restrictive job search. They only wanted to live around Washington, D.C. or Baltimore. And their ideal was they wanted to be at a big institution. And so really around that area, there's you know, um, Maryland College Park, Maryland, Baltimore County. And and um, and like maybe George Washington and a couple others, but there's also a lot of small schools. And then for them, it was like, well, since I'm doing a restrictive search, then um, and then I need to expand what I, what my most desirable will be, and I will apply at a small school, or maybe instead of only applying at public schools, I'll also apply at a private school. So I think it's an individual choice about what you're sort of willing to. I guess I'll call it give up in order to gain um, being in the region that you want. But it is certainly possible, particularly if you're going to like a metropolitan area, like you know, a big city on the East Coast um, or on the West Coast. Like, um, you know, I, I definitely think it's it's possible. Maybe a little bit harder, but it's not um, it's not astronomically hard. I mean, um, it's just a matter again of like being willing to to give up some of your ideal things that you would want in order to gain the the region uh, placement in the region where you want to live. So this is Jeremy, and I'd like to add to what Nick just said. Um, what I would suggest is being patient with the process as well. So the more narrow your focus and um, the less schools you apply to, it um, it may run on a different timeline. And so especially as an introvert, you know, you don't want to internalize that when, you know, maybe some of your graduate cohort mates are, are getting on-campus interviews and you're still waiting through that process. And employers run on different timelines. 
And so um, it will come. You just have to be patient with that. I, I agree with everything they said, especially someone that had to um, search in a specific region, you know, with my partner. And I think, um, I think the one thing that also I, I learned from it was looking, taking other avenues to search. So not just higheredsjobs.com. Um, I mean, I sat there with a map and would draw out and figure out the distance to every single college and how, you know, was it drivable or whatever else. And then go on to their site because a lot, you know, smaller schools aren't necessarily going to post on the bigger sites their job openings. So definitely go um, onto their sites and see what they have posted. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point, Millie. I'd also say too, like a lot, some schools, particularly small schools, don't actually even go to TPE for a number yeah. of reasons. They might not have budget. They may only have one position, and it doesn't justify the the funding. And so. Um, so I would also um, make sure, you probably already are whoever asked this question, but make sure you're not just job searching through TPE, but you're going to individual school websites and, and looking for jobs as well. Sorry, I have one more thing to add. Um, I have a grad student here who is doing a search specifically for the Philadelphia area. And um, so, I mean, what I did too is I reached out to some of my friends that were there and asked them what are some of the job, um, like, search engines that they use there. Um, so like Makuho or, you know, the, the um, what do you want to call it, the regions or um, uh, the groups that you're applying to, they, they have maybe search engines there that um, they put jobs on. So I think um, trying to see if you can reach out to your mentors or whoever else and see if they know some things. Um, but, you know, kind of, <laughs> especially when it's very specific like that, I think you have to really try um, to do a little, you know, bit more, I think. At least I felt that way. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's all really great advice. Um, I hope everyone's taking notes like I am. So one a question that's coming up now, or some, I can't remember which one of you talked about um, being prepared for small talk because it's going to happen. Um, somebody's asking if we could please share a few maybe conversation starters that would be helpful for small talk, whether it's like after the the employer picks you up from the candidate waiting room and you're walking to the table or maybe at a networking event, what are some of those things that you might consider thinking about being able to talk about? Anybody can answer. I trust you all. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I don't know. I think, I think for me too, um, and I think Nick might have hit on this a little bit too, is even just knowing what, you know, asking them what's going on there while they're at the conference, and um, I don't. I, I always ask about food. That's that's sad, but um, places that they may, you know. So it's it's. Um, I, I'm really bad at the chit chat thing, and so um, yeah, I think I think I try to ask about the local stuff because I do care about that. Like, what what are they doing? What have they seen? Gone to any of the sites since they've been there? Um, any great restaurants? That sort of thing. That's actually a really good point, Melanie. Just, I really liked what you said about being able to turn it around sometimes um, and asking questions about other people, because you're right. People do like to talk about themselves, some people at least. And, um, <laughs> and I think that you know, asking those questions about, you know, were you able to come in early and see what's going on in New Orleans, or have you been to New Orleans before? Like, you know, those are some of the things that um, aren't awkward but are relevant to your situation, right? You're going to be in New Orleans or you're going, you know, everybody's there for the same purpose. And so... Um, and you're not getting personal, like super personal. Right, exactly. Yes. So uh, this, is, this is Nick. I actually had a, like a little bit of a joke that I used almost every time an employer came to pick me up. Um, this was when I was searching. Um, since then, when I've been on the employer side, I've actually used the strategy Melanie talked about where I asked the candidate, like, how are you enjoying New Orleans or, you know, um, how's your day going, that kind of thing. But um, when, when, when I was a candidate um, and an employer came to pick me up the first time, I would say something like, um, I feel like I'm, like, this, like, when I'm waiting here, that, like, I'm in a waiting room at a doctor's office and, like, we're all waiting for the nurse to come, like, call her name and pick us up. And at first, I'm like, that's really cheesy. But almost everyone I said that to I chuckled when I said it. <laughs> um, and, they're, and they're like, yeah, totally. And, and, um, and uh, so it was just a, like a cool little way to, to break the ice. And it worked in most cases. So I think if you, even if you use the same line over and over again, if you have like a funny observation about the experience or, um, or something like that, um, and, and, you've, and you can create like a creative way of delivering it, um, there's nothing wrong with that. And, 
And, um, you know, it does, it breaks the ice a little bit because, like I said, like when I said it, most of the people picking me up chuckled and, and then, like, you know, continued with, with the little joke. So this is <laughs> that's Jeremy. Funny. Yeah, that, that's really good, Nick. Um, this is Jeremy. So I, um, what I would typically ask is, like, about travel plans, like how did they get there, what was their story, you know, like a lot of candidates, um, you know, if there's incremental weather, have some sort of, you know, story that kind of comes behind that and, and getting there. And then towards the end of the conference, um, I would typically ask if they're staying for um, the rest of NASPA. And that typically is a really good um, conversational uh, generator. I've, I've also had candidates when I, on the employer side, um, you know, I'll ask them how they're doing. And they'll use it as an opportunity to brag a little bit about the fact that they're presenting at the conference. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I've had candidates um, who, who happen to also be presenters at, at the conference itself. And they'd be like, oh, how, you know, how's your conference going? And, and you know, what have you been up to? And they're like, well, um, this morning I met with my group. We're doing a presentation during the conference on, you know, whatever topic. And, um, and it's both like continuing the conversation, but also like, you know, sort of an indirect way of bragging about the fact that you're doing a, a presentation. So if you happen to be doing a presentation, and you can find a way to work that in. I think that's great. And I would say, as an employer, particularly when I'm when I'm interviewing entry level folks, um, if if and particularly knowing what I know about the percentage of of program proposals that actually get accepted at NASPA, it's very small. If if I know that a um, that a candidate, entry level candidate of mine, is presenting or co-presenting, um, I actually think that's really impressive. And so, if you're in that boat, don't be afraid to work that in if you can. That's fantastic, and I think all of those, um, all of those points of information, they can carry on to like the networking events that are happening, the socials that occur in the evening. You know, there will be, um, as Melanie was saying, it can be overwhelming. It's also a great time to get to know the people who you might be working with, or the people in the state that you potentially could be working with. And if you really want the job, I think it's you know important to still continue to have questions. Um, there might be some other questions that you think of um, ap from after your interview until the time that you go to the social. So that's important. Um, are there any other networking social advice that's out there from Nick or Melanie or Jeremy? Yeah, this is Nick again. Another thing I would say is, um, so as a director, I don't expect entry level, folks applying for entry level jobs to have the same networking skills that I've developed over, you know, almost 20 years of my career. So. You know, like, even as an introvert now, you know, when I go to a conference, I have no problem talking to vendors or other professionals, and it's sort of become second nature to me. But as a, when I was going to TPE the first time, it scared the crap out of me. So, um, so I, I would say, like, don't put so much pressure. No one expects you to have that, that same level of networking skill. And, like, I know, just speaking for myself, when we do the socials for University of Arizona, we have candidates come talk to us, and I can sense a candidate is nervous. I don't hold that against them. Um, I mean, I, I totally get it, and I think most employers are totally going to get it too. I mean, just the fact that you're making an effort to be at the social at night, and and you and particularly if you've made the effort to go introduce yourself to um, to some of the employ some of the employers that come to the socials, um, that in and of itself is impressive. And so, um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself, and, and and don't feel like you know you have to be like crazy good at schmoozing because you don't have to be you know, excellent. You just have to, like, simply making the effort, like I said, is, is often impressive. All right. That's excellent. Now, um, we just have one more question, and then we'll probably wrap it up. And if you all have any additional advice to give, you can do that before we say goodbye to everybody. But um, I think along the same lines of what we were talking about, what are, do you have any suggestions on how to network when you don't have a buddy um, when you're going to TPE alone, what are some ways, if you went alone or if you maybe made a friend with somebody who went alone, what are some tips to navigate? So this is Jeremy. I would say um, if you, perhaps you're not going with someone, but um, uh, you may have a supervisor or a mentor who um, is either attending or they know of somebody who's attending. And oftentimes those um, folks will make connections, will suggest that you meet up or just say hi or stop by the table number. And I think that that can help just um, create a sense of belonging a little bit in that, that experience. So 
um, ask around. See who's going to the conference. And so you may not directly know them, but it's a great networking opportunity as well. Yeah, this is this is Nick, and, and I'll piggyback off of that because I think Jared is totally right. And the other thing I'll say is remember that there are many other people, including many other introverts, who are going through the exact same thing. And you will probably be able to figure out who they are. So if you go into a networking room and you see somebody who is um, you know, kind of off by themselves or kind of quiet, um, make a little bit of a connection because it will make it easier for both of you. So I actually did that once I was, I was at a, um, when I was a candidate um, and I got invited to a social and I went. Um, I, I intentionally made, made it to the room like 10 minutes after the event started because I didn't want to be the first person there. And, um, and when I went into the room, I immediately observed somebody else who was just as nervous as I was. And so I went up to them and I was like, I, gotta, I have a confession to make. I'm not very good at this. And they laughed and said, me neither. And then we kind of like stuck together. And it, it made the experience for both of us um, a lot easier. And so find other people going through the same thing and reach out to them a little bit because it will probably relieve them that they have someone there, even if it's someone they don't know. I agree with all of that. Excellent. Well, this was very awesome, amazing. And thank you, Nick. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Jeremy, for sharing um, your experience and for helping our candidates that are here with us today on the on the roundtable to be able to navigate TPE a little bit easy, easier or more easily. Um, and I cannot wait to see you all in New Orleans. And if you need anything, you can see that our emails are up on the screen now and our Twitter handles are there. And as always, you can you know contact TPE if you need anything at all. All right, so everybody have a wonderful week and um, I hope that we will see you soon. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Okay. Thank you.